This is a four-star hotel that only costs $170 and is located in the southern central region of Singapore near Marina Bay Sands. This is Hotel G. So welcome back to another hotel review and today we'll be reviewing Hotel G, a four-star hotel located in the Bencoolen area of Singapore and from our hotel room itself we can actually see Marina Bay Sands. So more about Hotel G is that the hotel is a very designer, lifestyle, cosmopolitan kind of hotel and it's very very much different from other hotels in Singapore and there are also outlets in Hong Kong, San Francisco and Thailand, Singapore being the last to open in the last few years. So if you're interested to find out more about Hotel G Singapore, watch on but do remember like share and subscribe and let's begin with the check-in experience and now talking about the check-in experience it was really 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 fast i think one of the fastest that we have ever done before and it only took three minutes despite having a fast check-in getting to the lobby was rather complicated and not as easy as it seems because the reception is located on level two and the lift lobby is located within a restaurant so you actually have to cut through the restaurant to get to the lift lobby and then take it to level two where you will find the reception and overall the reception wise wasn't very very grand ceilings were very low but it felt really really compact and dark at the same time but three minutes check-in timing very very fast so without further ado let's begin the hotel room tour So guys, so let's begin the room tour of Hotel G Singapore Good Room Queen. And immediately as you step in, you're greeted by a long hallway. And over on the left hand side are the switches and the aircon control with a glass panel and glass door for the toilet. Over on the right hand side is your open-ish concept wardrobe with only four hangers. A rack here for you to hang your stuff. And also a hook bar over here, there's already a laundry bag for you to use. And they do charge it so you cannot steal it. And entering the very, very small toilet, I would say this is one of the lousier toilets that I've ever bit too because there are no doors or curtains segregating the shower area with the shooting area and shooting area wise i would say it relatively looks very spacious but i don't really like wet toilet and over on the top here there are two more towels in a rack hanging your floor towel as well two toilet rolls a dustbin over there shower area has a rain shower and also stuck soap bottles which uh y'all know i don't like rules not here Shitting area wise really very spacious for a small toilet like this as you can see turning around more than enough space just that the toilet rolls over here and there's also no bidet for me to use and stepping out of the toilet the wash basin area is actually open concept just like life in Funan and there's also a bunch of amenities for you to use there's dental kit there's body soap there's sanitary bag there's vanity bag there's also a bar of soap over at the wash basin and overall wash basin wise I would say very very small and right at the bottom there's another hand towel there's also slippers and a blow dryer over here for you to use can't steal the slippers as well because they will actually charge you and moving on to the sleeping and living area not a very very grand area but over on my left hand side there's a study table with a couple of plug phone a tissue box and the mini bar area with the water the coffee the tea cups and kettle and they provided this cork board over here so it sticks a bunch of brochures so not very environmentally friendly lots of papers being used but there's a today i choose to go green but they are not going green there's the restaurant menu for the qr code so you can scan and order your food and proceeding to the sleeping area there are four pillows queen size bed but one once you put a queen size bed you basically do not have space to walk over on that side and that side as you can see but it's on the platform bed so right below there's the safe and a space for you to put your luggage very similar to life at Funan and over here you have an LG TV but it's a very very small TV I would say it's about 27 inch or less TV wise very hard to put HDMI because you can't pull it out but one thing that doesn't make the room very very squeezy is the high ceiling so the ceiling wise I would say is at least more than 3 meters to be honest making it feel a lot bigger compared to life at Funan because as you can see the wall to wall length it's not very big but the ceiling very high it makes it feel a lot more spacious there's also large windows allowing a lot of natural light in I can't even get over there but I have to step on a bit to get to the other side but the view wise is actually very good we are situated on level 10 which presents us a relatively decent view even though there's a larger building over on that side there's also curtains and blinds provided and overall the room don't really have much light so I guess tonight we'll see whether the room will get really dark or not for the floor wise both the toilet and the living area are all tiles it's just that they're different textured tiles on the outside is more of a timber looking style while inside is a plain looking normal tiles lah. so this leads us to our next segment whether this room is clean or not oh it's quite clean eh? wow it's actually clean 
Ah, uh, this is much dirtier. So yeah, after checking three areas, two of the three areas are actually clean. The only one not clean is actually the blinds that are over at the top, which nobody will actually ever touch. And looking around the floor, it looks generally clean. I would say it's uh, almost 9 upon 10. Good job, guys. Good job. And now talking a little bit about the room info, the room that we are staying in is called The Good Room and it's only 11 square meters. On the website itself, it states 11 to 13 square meters but I guess it varies. So for this booking, we actually booked through trip.com at a total cost of $166. So I would say it's a relatively decent price given its locations and its surrounding. As for the other rooms in this hotel, there are three more rooms. So ours is Good Room, there's Great Room, there's Greater Room and there's Family Room. Each of these four rooms have different sizes and it varies and our room is the smallest in this entire hotel and to compare to another small hotel that we have actually done live at Funan if you haven't watched that video go and check it out one of the hotels that I can really recommend but that hotel itself is 18 square meters and this is 11 nevertheless if you don't really like tight spaces or you have more than three luggages I would recommend not to stay in this room and get the bigger rooms or even other hotels because as you can see it's quite smaller I also forgot to mention that our booking comes with breakfast tomorrow so we're gonna check that out tomorrow morning and now talking a little bit about the location it's actually surrounded to four MRTs these four MRTs are Dobigot and Bugis which are the interchange and Rocho and Bengkulen for the not so popular ones but if it rains all the best to you lah. there are also a couple of restaurants opposite the hotel and the building beside the hotel so if you ever need food you can go there and just want to highlight that the surrounding area is not exactly very lively or very very populated it's actually on the more quieter side but overall it's still very very safe in Singapore being a safe country, I would say this area is still really decent. So as for this hotel, it does not have an in-room dining but it does have two restaurants right down below. The two restaurants are called 25 Degrees SG and Guinette Restaurant. There are QR codes in the hotel room itself for you to scan and order. So they did mention that you can just give it a call down to the concierge service and they will order it for you. So for 25 Degrees SG, they only sell burgers but overall it does look really really nice and as you can see from the menu over here, the picture just looks really really nice nice but for the price wise I wouldn't say it's super duper expensive but it's on a higher tier $16 for a buttermilk fried chicken burger or even a vegetarian burger beyond burger is $18 so these prices are all on a higher end but not top range hotel like $30, $40 plus dollars so still relatively affordable but if you head downstairs you can find a lot cheaper food and for the second restaurant Guinness Singapore overall the food wise a lot more western so you have pasta as well you have desserts you have brunch menu cold cuts, vegetarian, roastery, seafood and also lots of red meats that you can choose from. So I'll leave the menu up on screen for you guys to take a look and consider if you want to try it. Overall food looks really really nice. Haven't really got a confirmation from Rose whether we can try the food here but if we do you'll see in the next segment. What's up guys so currently it's 7pm and guess who's back from work? Yay! So probably y'all figure out that she has been at work. So the first half of the video, she's not here, but now she's here to do the food. Yay! So the hesitation. But yeah, uh, we're gonna order the food from the restaurants and we're gonna see how long it takes and what's the process because this is not actually a in-room dining thingy. It's a restaurant connected to the hotel. So if they bring it up for us, it's good lah. I don't want to go on anything. So we're going to order from two different restaurants because there are two options for you to choose from. So one of it is Jeanette restaurant. We're going to order the Oleo Scampi. And then for me, I'm going to order from 25 Degrees restaurant. I'm going to order a double cheeseburger and sweet potato fries and curly fries. Is this 25 Degrees restaurant? Yeah, uh, I got redirected from the hotel concierge. We are ordering for the in-room dining. Well, after many, many, many tries, we couldn't get to them, but at least they are polite. So the concierge operator suggests that they will get the restaurant people to call us actually, so we shall wait. So we're going to test the in-room dining speed. We're going to take the actual time, but it's 7.30, so we're going to take 7.30 p.m. and we're going to see how long it takes. We only order from one restaurant, the other restaurant have a call us back, so yeah. Later. Hello? Okay, got it. Thank you. So they say take 20 minutes uh, for the second restaurant. So it's 7.42 right now. So let's see how long does it take. Later. What's up guys, so now it's 8 p.m. and the food is finally here. So all in all, it's only $46. So rather decent. Yeah, I mean, it's restaurant price. Lah. So technically it's not 
hotel ish. So we're gonna eat now. I'm very very hungry, and we're gonna tell you guys how it tastes in a bit. So we have finished our food, and my aglio olio is all right. Lens burger is slightly lesser than all right. Sweet potato is good, and the twisted fries I never try, so I think it's. Good. So overall rating for me, I would give it a 7 because of the price is quite decent and the quality of the food is also decent. The portion is big. So that's it. This is the end of day 1 and we see you guys tomorrow. Good morning guys. So it's day 2 of Hotel G. I just came back from the gym. Overall, the gym is rather decent but it's really claustrophobic and very dark. So there's no windows also as well but there are like 4 to 6 cardio machines. Only one cable machine and dumbbells going up to only 10 kg. So if you're coming here, don't expect like a fantastic gym. So now we're gonna head for breakfast and... Breakfast here is, even though it's includes, <laughs> even though it includes in the room itself, but it's a bare minimum that you can think of. So you can see from the bureau here, I'll just give it a two out of ten. That's it. <laughs> I need to explain why it sucks because it's a combination of everything from the food to the service to the ambience of the entire place. It's really, really dark. Not much lighting coming in, but there's a lower level that you can sit on. But it was all filled last. I mean, if you're a tourist coming to Singapore, go outside and eat breakfast. It's a lot better eat yaku not toast box or all those better breakfast lah. what's up guys so welcome to the end of this hotel review and overall i feel that this hotel is relatively good in terms of the budget and location so overall points for me it's a 8.5 point 10 for a tourist coming to singapore and this is vacational just don't come here because i see myself as a vacationer so I don't want to rate it. <laughs> so yeah, that's our two cents of Hotel G Singapore. So this is the end of this entire hotel review. We hope this video has helped you in finding a hotel in Singapore and save your wallet from burning. So if you love this video, remember to like and subscribe and check out all our hotel reviews and travel videos coming soon. So see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.